With that said, it's about time to roll into said weekly recap of anime, and we're bringing up our tier list like we normally do. Fuck. I, I do not know why that thing keeps beeping. So, I didn't get to watch as much as I wanted to. I, uh, I could probably have put some effort into um, making the video. Instead, I decided to try and watch some of this so I'd have a lot. I'd have some stuff to talk about. Obviously, there are some new things, some that I actually watched um, specifically for tonight's topics. Um, Ranma and a half. And let me pull up my notes here on some of the things because I did end up watching quite a bit of anime this week, regardless of the time crunch. I do at least try to keep up with that much. So let's go. Let's pull up the list. Excuse me. Okay, there. It's finally loaded. Just didn't want to load my notes right out the bank. Right out the gate. So I think the first thing, and you know what? Let me just enter full screen mode with this. I'm about ready to pull the fucking power cord on this thing. Give me a second. Fuck it. Power cord is power cord has been pulled. I don't want to deal with that thing beeping in the background this whole time. So, first thing to talk about. Shangri-La Frontier debuted this week. And it was very, very good with the start of this second season. Now, I watched the first season dubbed, and I'm doing the second season subbed so I can keep up with it. Um, and I actually really liked the dub for this. Uh, the sub's not uh, the sub is still pretty good. I believe that sub voice actors are generally more um, they they put more effort into what they do. So we're starting the season off with uh, picking up where Sun uh, Sun Raku, I believe that's how he goes in game, where Sun Raku. Uh, last left us chasing down the magic uh, operations unit. And it's taken him to uh, some ancient ruins that have all these golems and stuff. And he's fighting his way through with an NPC party. And right at the very end, his two clan mates show up and they are very, very pissed that he has been ignoring them. So we're probably about to see um, Katsu and pencil gone try and beat the shit out of this guy for ignoring them. Which will most certainly be interesting because Pencilgon has already tried once to kill our main character in the game. And then they teamed up and did the entire thing with um, uh, Weathermon the Tomb Guard. And now they're back at it again. I absolutely love the dynamic between the, the main trio, by the way. They're just a bunch of nuts playing games together. And that's just like, it reminds me of playing games with my friends. Constantly like berating on each other, beating each other up and all that kind of stuff over stupid, stupid stuff. So yes, I really, really do love Shangri-La Frontier. Am I going to put it in the must watch oh, yet? No, because well, it did have a really good start. And it has, like, the intro is just as good as the last season's. Uh, animation is just as good. Um, I don't think it's quite up there with some of the other stuff that I have yet. It's right there. It's, like, right on the threshold. But I need a little bit more out of it. Next on the list. You are Miss Servant. So if you're not familiar with this one, your Miss Servant is basically um, this guy who's living alone, like a high school student. Uh, one day a maid shows up at his house and is like begging him to hire her. And he finds out she's an assassin and only decides to hire her after she saves his life uh, from a traffic accident. 
but she has absolutely zero skill with housework or any sort of made stuff. And she is so far detached from normal human life that she doesn't even know what it's like. But it's been very good, actually. It's like a nice, relaxing story. Um, very endearing. I like the characters. Um, they also added a dog in, so bonus points for the doggo. However, this one goes up a couple of spots this week. I'm moving it up two because I really liked the last episode, sort of uh, how it gave us a little bit of character exploration on both ends. And it isn't just um, shorting us, I would say. It's doing a lot of like the the general rom-com sort of things that you'd want to see. You get like a little bit of the relationship dynamic. You get character building. You get a little bit of information about what's going on. And it's doing it all, putting a nice little bow on it with every episode. I feel like it's progressing very smoothly. So that's moving up. The next thing I watched, I'll be a villainous who goes down in history. This one is just sort of consistent this season. I like it. It's going to stay down here and interesting. You can see me moving it around here. It's going to stay right there. Because while I do like it, it hasn't given me a reason to like uh, bump it up or knock it down a notch. And it's weird because I generally don't care much for these Otome game sort of things. I just don't. But this one has me intrigued. So I like that in this episode, you kind of get to see um, the main character and her rival interact a little bit. You get to see the difference between them and how she doesn't just act like a, a goody goody two shoes the whole time. The main character, because she's trying to be um, the villain. And she wants to prove that she can do anything that the hero, the heroine in this Otome game can do as well. So she finds herself in a spot where, like, she's trying to motivate um, someone to continue living, like, give them a reason to live, and to do it without sounding, or to do it while sounding like a villainess. And it gives her some really good moments that show, like, that uh, get, like, the high-handed, haughty attitude uh, down well while also showing some sort of concern for other people. I think it's doing a really good job of like balancing those aspects where she's not an evil person. Uh, she just has an objective. Which, for a main character, is good. So ultimately, she's just being kind in her own weird way. Next on the list, most notorious talker. That one's also going to stay. New character was introduced this episode, this latest episode, uh, Alma, the assassin. Uh, I'd like her character. She's kind of like silly and um, a little bit airheaded at the same time, but I feel like it doesn't mesh too terribly well with um, her assassin ability. So like on one side, she is like this goofy gal sort of character. And on the other side, she is like this uh, trained, uh, really effective assassin. So while I do like Talker, it's going to stay there because I like this latest episode. It did a really good job, but... Um, didn't specifically impress me enough to move it around or make me feel like it needs to change. I feel like right now it's kind of in that transition point where the first two episodes were a tad dodgy, but it's getting better and better as it goes. And it might start moving up the ranks more and more because I've already bumped it from interesting to very good. Next on the list. Tying the Knot with an Amagami sister. So Tying the Knot with an Amagami sister is one of those harem romance anime that I did not expect to like. 
And I have, it's been more and more fun to watch as I've gotten to know the characters a bit more and they aren't exactly everything that they uh, um, want you to think at face value. Um, I think there is a little bit of an interesting supernatural element that has been uh, employed in the last episode and a half. And it's definitely like, is there, okay, are they actually going to go with like the idea of like gods and spirits and stuff, or are they just going to keep it to the romance stuff? Which either way, um, it also did a really good job of giving each character their own development in this one. Uh, in episode three, we got to see how like the younger sister behaves and like she's claustrophobic and all of that. And we could see her have a, a moment with the main character over him being uh, doing the masculine thing and actually taking action to help her. Um the, the middle sister being the tsundere brat that she is. Um, getting a moment to actually be nice to the main character and enjoy some time with him. And then the older sister, who you would assume is an absolute ditz and would just go along with the flow, being... Um, where is my mouse? There we go. Sorry, my mouse is dead. The older sister basically like being a little bit more scheming and thoughtful than what uh, your impression of her would be right out the gate. All right. So now we're moving into another one. And I'm probably going to get crucified on the internet for this one. But Dragon Ball Dima. Just okay. And you can fight me on this, but Dragon Ball, look, I, I will not insult uh, Akira Toriyama on this channel. I have basically said Akira Toriyama's work is the reason I even got into anime to begin with. Let me be clear about that. I don't think uh, you can take away from Akira Toriyama's creative success and just how much he actually did for the medium of anime. But this particular creation, I am not feeling. Now, Music character, uh, music and like artwork and animation are all great. Production stuff, very, very good. And the story is actually like very in line with the kind of thing I would expect Toriyama to do. It's kind of that like silly, fun sort of adventure that the series started out as, the Dragon Ball franchise started out as. But ultimately, it's not really the kind of thing I enjoy Dragon Ball for the most. To me, Dragon Ball is like the, the pinnacle of like hype moment of badass characters doing badass things. That's what I care about when I watch this. And the first two episodes have really been nothing but like setting up the plot, which under normal circumstances, I would be all for. But I don't generally tune into Dragon Ball specifically for the plot because I've never thought its writing was terribly amazing. And I've even talked with other Dragon Ball fans. I was on a stream with uh, Biggles Mets a while, uh, a couple weeks ago, talking about um, I Parry Everything. And backstage, we got to talking about like dra Dragon Ball power scaling and all that. And we were talking about how bad um, some of the writing actually was for Dragon Ball. That doesn't mean it's a bad series. I still like Z. I still like Super. Okay. I, I just couldn't do GT and I can't do Dyma. Well, actually, I would say Daima so far has been more entertaining than GT was. But that's just for now. There's only been, I've only watched two episodes. So, as the season goes on, it may go up. Don't crucify me for this. But right now, I think Dragon Ball Daima is just okay. It's not my favorite. It's not my least favorite. Finally, we are going to put Lockdown Level X technically where it, uh, it it honestly belongs, but I've been intrigued by this one. So Lockdown Level X was an interesting little experiment of an anime. I liked 
part of the concept of it. The the time, the, the death loop sort of concept that it has. I think that is um, a good element it has to it. And if you would have stuck with like this death loop sort of thing of these two characters trying to escape this apartment building and um, get away from the monster, that would have been good. But they've incorporated this weird sort of game element to it with like levels and stuff that they have to clear. I feel like um, that sort of detracts from what I want to see. There's also the issue that it suffers in the animation department and it suffers in the um, length department. It is six episodes, each like 11 minutes a piece. And it's, it's not terribly well animated. It's like a stop motion manga sort of thing. I'm intrigued by the premise Although the last couple of episodes have me a little bit worried as to where it's actually going to go. If it would have just stuck with like a straight horror and not tried to incorporate a horror game sort of thing into it with the levels and all that, I think it would have been much better. But for now, I'm dropping it all the way down here. So next, how I attended an all guys mixer. I, I always have to laugh saying that title because it's this is going to officially be the first one that I'm going to swapping not finishing. I'm putting it in the on hold section because it isn't absolutely terrible. No Dom, but soon, yes. Hope you're good. <laughs> nice to see you, Muffler Tape. <laughs> anyway. Um, all guys mixer. This is going to be the first one of the season that I am putting down because it just isn't there for me. Like we get some brief glimpses of some of the girls, like episode three, like not cross-dressed. Okay. But it's kind of been my same. I had the same problem with pseudo harem last season. It's pretty much been like the same thing over and over again, like the same sort of element over and over again, like the, the, the bright and cheery guy and the um, Kudere mangaka chick doing the same thing. The two main characters doing this, the main chick, the main guy doing the same thing. And then um, the, the, the other, I don't even know how to classify the other two side characters, but yeah, it's like the same loop over and over again, just slightly altered situations. I may end up coming back to it if I ever like have just a bunch of free time and don't know what to do. I may come and finish it because it is slightly entertaining. But with the amount of anime that I am checking out, I need to start dropping some and getting rid of some that I do not want to watch or just feel like aren't worth my time. Obviously, I'm going to favor the ones up top here. I'm going to want to watch those more. But and so basically anything that is interesting and below is most likely to get dropped. Anything I don't I strictly don't like uh, is going to end up in the boring or bad sort of segment of it. So, yeah. Um, OK, so next. Maybe I'll save that one for a little bit later and we can sort of roll that into the first topic of the night. But Ranma and a half is on this list, and we'll we'll roll into that because I did watch Shad's video on it, and I have some comments about it to make. Uh, but um, we'll go with Magic Lumiere Co Limited. I'm not a big Magic Girl fan, and I mean I think I'm gonna move this one down. Uh below talker here it's still very good but it's kind of like i don't know i feel like it's um losing steam as it goes on but uh this latest episode with um her actually like having some like level of training as a magic girl and being able to do things uh it, like actually like fight and all that was nice. They've kind of intro introduced some like intercorporation uh, competitiveness with other magical girls, like snagging their kills and all that. And yeah, I do like the premise of it. Like 
you have all these like corporations like using magical girls uh, to fight monsters. Capitalism, baby, capitalism. But the, the past couple of episodes, they've done good for character work. But as far as like actually like moving along with a plot or anything, I feel like it's dragging its feet and maybe could do a little better. Anything else I wanted to? Hmm. All right. We'll continue on. We'll continue on. We will save the Ron Mon half for last. So, loner life in another world. I'm moving all the way to the bottom of my list right now because it's just barely hanging on. For I'm not too terribly interested in the, like the dynamic going on between characters. It, it feels very generic isekai. It doesn't do anything insanely creative to make me really, really want to be in, uh, continue watching the series. It's not terrible by any means. It'll probably go into the on hold section. Uh, it's just that it struggles with um, differentiating itself from the general tropes of isekai. It doesn't do much in the way of actually being incredibly creative. You can find a lot of these elements done very similarly in other series. It's just kind of an okay, generic isekai. I don't know. Next episode might be my last, honestly, with how it's going. I might need to drop that one entirely. Uh, one that I will probably be dropping after the next episode is, um, uh, I, I can't speak to that one. I can't speak to the healer who was exiled from his party yet because I haven't caught up with it. I'm one episode behind. It's one that I didn't get to watch this week, but I feel like that might be another one that I will end up dropping. Uh, so. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do this while I was pre-stream. I needed to add this category because I tried Yakuza Fiance. And I am not exactly a huge fan of it. I'm just going to say it. I don't specifically like the characters. They haven't grabbed me. I've watched two episodes. I don't know. It's it's a little too like abusive, toxic sort of relationship for me. Like, I don't like it. This is. I believe the category for it is actually Jose, which is for adult women, which would make sense because it's very much focused on like the taming the bad boy sort of thing. OK, if that's your thing, sure. But this guy is an absolute psychopath and this chick is equally as crazy and I'm not into either of them. So this is one that I specifically have to say, no, I probably will not return to it because yeah. 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 Not my thing. Oh, that's another one that I forgot to talk about. Um, I did catch up with um, Goodbye Dragon Life. And there is, uh, it's an otherwise like generic, like uh, fantasy anime. Like there's nothing too terribly special about it. Like, I mean, other than like the dragon reincarnated as a human, otherwise it's, there's nothing super like endearing to it. But there is one thing that always shocks the ever-loving fucking hell out of me every time they bring it up in this series. And it is that, so this, this dragon reincarnated as a human, and he's living in a village with a bunch of other humans, and some demi-humans, okay? Particularly this cow lady, who is married to the captain of the guard of the village. So... Nothing out of the un out of the ordinary there. However, it gets really weird when they make it a consistent point to talk about how the village 
um, partakes of the cow lady's milk. Like, they all like it. That'd be one thing, like, if you're, like, you know, if it was just her husband, no, but it's it's the whole village likes the chick's milk. Which is a little weird, because she just looks like a human with some horns, okay? And she's she's coming out serving people like pint sized glasses of milk, saying, "Yes, this is my milk. Do you enjoy my milk?" And like everyone's in like drinking contests with her breast milk. Well, this episode got like another level of weird because, well, now it's the 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 it's the captain of the guards' um, teenage daughter who's milking herself too. And was going to give the milk to her dad. But um, he was conked out in the corner of the room. So they gave it to someone else. Excuse me. What the fuck? It, it, it isn't an integral part of the series. Like, it's not like this huge plot point, but it is a consistent thing that has weirded me out. Like, why is this woman feeding her breast milk to the entire village? Don't you think that's just a little bit weird? And yes, I know they did something similar in Monster Musume. I'm aware. Okay. But I really don't want to think about that one either. I'm just saying, I'm here to, like, watch this... Uh, um, this fantasy anime about this this dragon taking care of a snake girl in a village, and they keep call it cutting to these random moments of talking about the the cow people's breast milk. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Can't say I'm uh, particularly a fan of that element. It's kind of unusual but i think it's gonna stay right there it's interesting enough uh not as good as dyna but it's interesting enough and i haven't watched any uh, uh i did watch don to don but i did that like a month ago in theaters so it doesn't really count i didn't get to get around well and re-zero i watched re-zero this week Fuck. I just didn't watch uh, Bleach or Blue Box, which are both really good. Um, but from this point, there is only one left to talk about. And um, that is Ranma and a Half, which will segue us into our next topic after I get through this. So, Ranma and a Half as an anime just the remake in and of itself, not comparing it to anything I thought was actually very good. I enjoyed it. I liked the animation. I liked, I watched the dub. So I liked the English voice acting more than what I've heard of the original, which I haven't watched by the way. So don't crucify me on this. I have no frame of reference as far as Ron and a half goes outside of just watching the first three episodes of this, of uh, this remake. And I think it was a good anime. Standing alone, not judging it on anything else, just talking about the quality of the anime. It's good. It's entertaining. It's actually really fun. I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. 